Okay, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to the Social and Environmental Criteria Breakout Session. I'm John Watt, and I'm an urbac ad hoc expert on sustainable public procurement, and I will be the one facilitating this session. So I'm really delighted to be joined in the session by uh, Io Hadze Barati from Municipality of Kavala and Jose Castero from Pampona City Council, who will both be presenting on their actions and applications of social and environmental criteria that they made during Making Spend Matter. As before we get started, just a couple of points on the actual session itself. So for those of you who are um, looking for the translation, uh, if you click on the bottom right of your Zoom screen, you should see a tab which then allows you to switch to either French or Dutch. Um, hopefully then that will make it more understandable, particularly with my Scottish accent. Um, next slide, please. The, the, the other aspects of Zoom, I think you can, uh, you can probably, I'm sure you can work out for yourselves. Um, we will uh, have a sort of question and answer session at the end of the, at the end of the um, presentations. I think uh, just because of technical uh, sort of complications, we'll be just uh, discussing amongst ourselves, but please do feel free to leave any comments and feedback and we will be able to um, respond to them after the event. Within the session itself, uh, we will be having a, a presentation from, from EO on, on Kavala and the story of the challenges and barriers that they faced and the solutions that they found in implementing their kind of groundbreaking sustainable procurement in Greece. Then we'll hear from Jose on Pamplona and how Pamplona has uh, increased their strategic aims for sustainable procurement um, through different initiatives. And as I mentioned, then we'll have a panel discussion with Io and Jose just to find a bit more about the stories behind those case studies and uh, and what they've been how they how they've been doing that. Next slide, please. I think we're having a few technical issues with the slides, but I'll I'll continue for now anyway. Um, uh, so just to give you a really just a reminder really about the um, why we are focusing on social and environmental criteria as part of making spend matter. Uh, I'm sure, as you all know, public procurement is a very powerful market force. Uh, there's approximately 1.8 trillion euros is spent by public authorities in the EU each year, which is around 14% of EU GDP. So uh, with SPP, um, we can use this power and drive the market for more sustainable goods and services. So for that reason, we really wanted to provide the Making Spend Matter cities with the tools and the, the knowledge to set strategic goals and systems around their sustainable public procurement. We wanted to help them to build capacity for including social and environmental criteria in, in their own procurements. And also support them to engage with suppliers to support them in delivering social and environmental outcomes. Because after all, the Making Spend Matter project was also about the, the local spend, the, the um, increasing the, the local economy through procurement and help. So then helping the suppliers in the area to, to really engage with, with the, these, these new shifts in sustainability and, and social and environmental criteria. So two cities that were particularly active in this regard were Kavala and Pamplona. Uh, they really tried to uh, implement the, the the learnings and the and the teaching that we that we had during the during the project, and um, and I'm very pleased today. We have two very kind of interesting case studies, uh, and the first one is from Io in Kavala, who is going to tell you a little bit more about the story of how they piloted sustainable criteria for the first time in a cleaning services contract. So without any more, any more ado from me, Io, I will pass the floor to you. Thank you, John. Uh, it's been a real pleasure actually participating at this uh, journey of uh, making spend uh, matter. For Kavala, it was, uh, that's a small city in northern of uh, Greece. Uh, and one of the most uh, lacking partners in terms of uh, procurement experience. Uh, it was a roller coaster experience, uh, starting from the basic spend analysis, progress to the advanced one, and even trying out the uh, social and environmental criteria in one of our tenders. Uh, 
so in a very small uh, period of time, we managed to make a huge um, uh, gaps uh, of uh, progress. And uh, uh, in doing so, we try to apply uh, social and environmental criteria in a cleaning services contract, which, which was something happened for the first time, not only locally and regionally, but also in a national level. Uh, in this process, we face specific challenges and uh, the most important of them were, of course, the total absence of um, legal framework. And uh, uh, this uh, was an, an additional stress for us uh, in terms of uh, pretendary control and, the, of course, the fear of rejection of the whole effort if something really went wrong. Uh, also, uh, in these uh, challenges, we had also to face the Greek suppliers uh, little experience in uh, including those information on social and environmental activities in their tender bids. And of course, the lack of awareness of uh, procurement opportunities for the local market, as well as the lack of required certification for those specific elements having environmental criteria to be included in bids and uh, uh, the procurement um, logic and mentality that until then was emphasizing on price, uh, on low price and decision-making process, and the long payment terms of uh, those contracts uh, constricting uh, local SMEs from participating in that, since uh, uh, most of the times, so by the, uh, the time of the offering of the goods, until the time they actually get paid is uh, several months in between, which makes it uh, very uh, difficult for a small uh, SME uh, to sustain this, um, uh, this time uh, limit. And finally, there is an increased competition from larger companies bidding for the same contracts. And this became particularly intense during the COVID era, uh, where we have uh, all, our, or all our tenders being announced digitally and having uh, larger companies uh, bidding for, for these uh, specific um, uh, contracts, ex excluding, of course, our uh, local uh, market. Uh, next slide, please. For each and every one of these challenges, we decided to develop tailor-made solutions. So uh, we organized several meetings internally and externally, engaging as, uh, as many people as possible to um, collect all the possible knowledge in the field we can gain. Also, we researched in detail and we identified the different types of criteria suitable for a cleaning material standard. And we cross-check the availability of the products bearing these criteria at the local market. So we make sure that our local SMEs will be definitely being bidding. Uh, moreover, we opened up the discussion with the local suppliers and discussed the tender conditions uh, with them, and in, in, in fact, we co-designed the tender with them. Um, moreover, we supported them with training seminars in, in order to facilitate their um, uh, tendering uh, files. Finally, we acknowledged the difficulty of the whole effort, and we decided to be bold and try it out. In result, the criteria identified and applied at the tender where the 0% plastics in all materials supply, all materials should be recyclable, and of course, 1% of the value of the procurement to be contributed to social initiatives indicated by the municipality. By the end of the effort, we managed to publish a half a million tender on cleaning material, which was also published at the uh, European Union newspaper. And uh, we managed to have eight bidders. Four of, four of them uh, were local, local SMEs. None of them was excluded due to um, supporting documents, which means that we did a great job training our local uh, suppliers. And uh, four of them, four of the eight were local suppliers. And one contract is finally being signed and it will be a two, uh, biannual one. So we'll have a tender, uh, we'll have a contractor for two years. So we're very happy that we came all the way through and we succeeded into concluding this effort, which from, this, from the first, uh, it wasn't so promising. So thank you so much. Thanks very much, Io. And um, just a little snapshot there of, uh, of a great story where this is the first time that Kavala or any of their suppliers has, has, uh, has seen or, or used any social environmental criteria. So 
a really fantastic story of how the, the groundwork was put in to make sure that was a successful tender process. We'll dig a bit deeper into that just, uh, just after Jose's presentation and uh, find out a bit more from you about those success factors. Um, so on to Jose from Pamplona, who've also been uh, doing their own work on social and environmental criteria. So Jose, I will pass the floor to you. Thank you, John, and good morning, everyone. Well, um, Pamplona City Council had already implemented the use of environmental criteria in some of its procurements between 2008 and 2018. Thanks to an internal guide on the chapter produced in 2005 and a regional law formalizing their use in 2008. Nevertheless, uh, incorporating social criteria into procurements was still a new concept. In 2018, a new regional procurement law was approved. It makes social value a mandatory 10% of selection criteria, which changed the goalposts and meant the city and its anchor institutions needed to understand better how to include social criteria going forward. So when we knew about the Preston's good practice about a strategic public procurement, we were really interested in transferring it and especially work within the network to progress in the field of social and environmental criteria. During these years of experience, Pamplona City Council has faced a number of barriers and challenges in realizing their goals about social and environmental criteria in public procurement. First, the lack of a dedicated team or unit specialized in public procurement. The tasks in public procurement processes are spread into a variety of professional profiles. Every one of the 12 different departments manage its own procurement processes. Second, the lack of knowledge of the staff making the tendering documents about social and environmental issues and how they can be addressed properly. Third, the lack of a framework or surgery around procurement and the outcomes that Pamplona City Council wants to achieve. And fourth, in some cases, public servants are reluctant and unwilling to change the way they procure. Some public servants they still think that price must be the only selection criteria as it makes procurement an easier process. Next slide, please. Regarding the solutions applied in 2019, the city produced an instruction and guide about a strategic and socially responsible public procurement. The guidance includes support for procurement staff on objectives and principles of a strategic public procurement in Pamplona, internal rules for how to manage it and how to include social and environmental criteria throughout the entire procurement process. The guidance also provides the staff in Pamplona with examples of social and environmental criteria, backed up with legal text in order to show what is possible and reduce perceptions of risk. Indicators of social and environmental criteria and an evaluation of and monitoring system with verification suggestions also further provide procurers in Pamplona with the tools to make it happen. So in our city, three things work very well. The guide is really re ready to use and gives specific examples of social criteria and how to assess and evaluate them. Also from 2018, it is mandatory by law to include social uh, or environmental criteria before it was only an option. And this makes that public servants make the effort to introduce social criteria in, in procurement processes. Besides, once the guide was approved, it was explained in training workshops to public servants of the different municipal departments. This helped to arise awareness on this internally. However, some things work less well. Despite the efforts, organizational culture around procurement has changed very slightly. Also, two strong political leaderships around social responsible procurement can put at risk the progress if a political change happens. And finally, monitoring of impact is still the unfinished business of social responsible procurement. The work on the guidance and embedded and embedding sustainable public procurement more strategically in Pamplona has led to the following reflections and lessons learned. 
Organizational cultural change is a key part of integrating social criteria into procurement. The market learns and, adapt, and adapts slowly to social demands, so informing them early is very important. It is easier for big companies with dedicated procurement departments to bid for tenders with social criteria. So the challenge is balancing demands while giving SMEs opportunities to bid. Difficulties lie in funding, the link between what we want to achieve, what to ask for, and how to evaluate it. While Pamplona has set the strategy policy and guidance in place, the challenge now is to provide the staff and suppliers with capacity to implement this tender to tender. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Jose. And uh, yeah, I mean, really, again, really great to hear the, the different work that you've been doing in Pamplona from and really, I guess, centering around that, uh, that cultural change element where uh, you've really been working on the, the mandatory aspects of, of SPP as well as the, the training and the guidance that you've been you've been undertaking. Um, maybe as we get started into the, into the, the sort of the conversation, uh, Jose, just tell me a bit more about the background to this in Pamplona and why did the city really want to want to push forward on social and environmental criteria and procurement? Well, I must say that uh, Pamplona as a city is committed with uh, sustainable development since uh, 1999 when a local Agenda 21 started to be developed. Uh, one of the topics that Pamplona started to work on, to work on was environmental uh, procurement. And a guide was produced in 2005 to orientate public servants about how to purchase eco-labeled and recycled products, hire companies with environmental management system, etc. So uh, I think the city council is looking to procurement as um, in a way that we, we need to care about how we are spending uh, public money and being responsible doing that. And this means not, not only uh, hiring the, the lowest price of uh, services and products, but also uh, looking for uh, a quality regarding uh, social and environmental aspects. Thanks, Jose. And Dio, how about you in Cavallo? What was the what were the drivers behind this uh, this push for for sustainable procurement in your city? Uh, Cavallo is a signatory member of the Covenant of Mayors, one of uh, of the treaties actually binding us with um, our uh, uh, with low carbon emissions as a main target. And uh, in comparison with the procurement strategic plan that we elaborated through Making Spend Matter, it was a clear uh, aspect for us that social and environmental criteria, uh, social and environmental aspects should be uh, sustained. Also, the social aspect was very important for us in order to support uh, and reverse the unemployed, high unemployment rate in Kavala as well as the brain drain. And at the same time, being a touristic city, we should pay attention on environmental conditions and include such parameters in development protocols. And finally, it was an, an opportunity for our local SMEs to modernize and sell and produce products sharing environmental and social ethics. Thanks, Eo. So yeah, so I guess in both cities then there was a, certainly a political driver from, from different levels, which really helped to, to gain that momentum. Um, Eo, you mentioned that it was the this was the first time that Kabbalah really tried to, to implement this in a, in, a, in a procurement in this way. Um, how did you get started? What was the what was the kind of first steps you took to get colleagues on board and to really to, to move forward with this? Uh, since we were uh, swimming in, uh, in unknown waters, uh, we decided to draw all the knowledge available from our uh, local stakeholders and connoisseurs. So we did major uh, events and uh, meetings calling out, calling out for uh, people with knowledge on the sector. And of course, we trusted the market's uh, reflexes that usually are faster than ours and uh, uh, covered up the, uh, the field that was uh, missing. We did extensive uh, consultation and bilateral meetings. And of course, we had the guidance from the lead partner that did uh, targeted meetings with us. 
And uh, having as a prototype the Pamplona's example, we knew that the uh, that the effort could be succeeded, and we knew where we wanted to arrive. Actually, uh, and more than that, we used uh, all the communication tools available to raise awareness on our effort, and uh, uh, therefore uh, call for people that uh, could actually help us uh, through that. Okay, so yes, yeah, so really effectively using that the network that was generated from the project as well as other sources. Um, Jose, you were a prototype in Pamplona, um, but obviously you've already you were already a little bit more advanced in, in working on social and environmental procurement already. But uh, perhaps just thinking back to the beginning of making spend matter, wh where did you where did you sort of start from with that work and improving the the guidance and, and making this mandatory? Yeah, well, um, for us, uh, it happened at the same time that the, the the law, the regional law was approved. And also we started to work in this uh, transfer network. So um, it was very, very, very good to have uh, both things at the same time. So uh, we started to, to make first the, the spin analysis and yes, look to the, um, to the figures uh, of our procurement. And also uh, we started to work on this uh, instruction and guide because um, one of the main uh, barriers uh, to introducing the social clauses and, and environmental criteria in procurement was that uh, uh, public servants many times they don't know how to integrate uh, uh, this in the tendering documents. And also because uh, there was uh, some kind of uh, an optional uh, approach to introduce them. So uh, the approval of, of this instruction and this guide uh, has supposed a, a big improvement because now uh, with the regional goal, uh, law in place and the instruction, internal instruction and guide, uh, now it is mandatory for, for all the departments and public service to, to introduce uh, social and environmental criteria in, in the tendering processes. So you mentioned then, so there's obviously been a various number of, of methods that you've used together with, with the legislation, with the guidance and, and other aspects that you've, you've brought in. But thinking back, which, which of those sort of tools or techniques that you've been, you've been working on have, have worked well and perhaps which ones have worked less well and why? Yeah, well, I must say that the, the, the guide uh, and the instruction uh, really uh, very well because uh, it, it includes not only uh, specific examples of uh, social and environmental clauses to introduce in the tendering documents, but also uh, it, uh, um, it uh, has designed uh, 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 and gives specific examples of the documents that the provider must um, present to the city council to demonstrate that they are going to uh, comply with the and social and environmental criteria. And also it includes a monitoring system. And uh, this is one of the key aspects of uh, a social and environmental uh, criteria in procurement from my point of view. Uh, this has worked uh, really well. And also uh, uh, the training sessions that we have made internally with uh, all the staff of the city council. So uh, they, they uh, are able now to know better how to introduce uh, this criteria in the procurement processes. And uh, regarding what worked um, less well, I must say that, um, well, uh, monitoring uh, needs uh, to be improved uh, still. So uh, sometimes uh, it is easy to introduce uh, social and environmental criteria uh, to have uh, providers uh, uh, that uh, include, uh, include uh, uh, social criteria in their bids, but then uh, there is a necessity to, to follow up uh, in the implementation of the contract, in the development of the contract, that they are uh, um, introducing these uh, commitments in their, in their work. And this is still uh, something that we need to work on. 
Thanks, Jose. Yeah, I think uh, I think most public authorities still find the monitoring side of of, uh, of social environmental criteria particularly difficult, with obviously with resources and and uh, other factors. Um, so yeah, it's, it's obviously um, a, an area that I think everyone is still working on. Um, Eo, um, what about yourself in in Cavallo? What were the the sort of tools and techniques that you find you found worked well at the start of this journey, and what would you perhaps uh, do differently? Well, for uh, for us, I think uh, having a dedicated uh, procurement uh, team working throughout the process was our main uh, our, our main weapon to the whole uh, obstacle and challenges issue. Uh, more than that, uh, we uh, focused on building the trust locally, having all our stakeholders being again engaged with us in the process, and um, and this uh, and this also happened vice versa, meaning that uh, not only we engage them in the process of co-designing the tender, but also we train them back in order to make sure that uh, they have the capacity of biding when times will come. And also, of course, the lead, sec the lead expert support and uh, constant uh, advising and uh, the exchange of experience with other cities as well as uh, with Pamplona made us uh, even more, uh, let's say, safe uh, on what we were designing because our major concern was, of course, um, the fear of having uh, the, the total effort being rejected at the pretendering control. And uh, things that we would, um, we think that, did, uh, did not went very well, uh, where, uh, for example, our effort to engage anchor institutions like Pamblona did, and did it successfully for us, uh, it wasn't the case because our uh, anchor institutions were not so willing to uh, take the same risk because it was a risk uh, nationally, because as I, meant, as I mentioned before, there's no legislative framework um, allowing that in per se. And uh, of course, uh, the, uh, the difficulty in um, in finding skilled staff to transfer the knowledge in uh, in other municipal institutions and bodies that could actually adopt uh, the example. Thanks, you. I mean, you mentioned there. Then this is uh, in terms of the national conditions for this, and even the the sort of regional or local conditions with the other anchor institutions. This was something that was quite. Quite groundbreaking. It's not been it's not been done so much in in Greece. So, what made this successful in Kavala? What were the factors that allowed Kavala to really do something quite different for for the national context? I, I strongly believe that was our uh, procurement team and the project team working really with dedication on this uh, on this task. Uh, but uh, I also believe in good timing. By the time we started maturing our uh, procurement processes, also the national uh, process of green uh, tenders uh, was in uh, under consultation, and there was uh, this discussion over including uh, green uh, criteria and social criteria in uh, in tendering was under uh, let's say was uh, was under discussion. So that that helped us um, convince even more people engaging in the process. And also we had in all this uh, journey, the political support of the mayor and uh, the, the close interest and support of our local suppliers uh, following the process since the beginning. And um, of course, the, the opportunity for uh, uh, that the project gave us to, as a motive to try it out, because if it wasn't for making spend, I don't think that uh, we will uh, willingly get into this, uh, uh, this effort uh, as per se. Thanks, Eo. So yeah, so really just making the most of the, of the different, uh, different conditions that, that fell in place at that moment. Um, Jose, in, in Pamplona, what were the kind of critical success factors that allowed this to this um, legislation as well as the guidance to be really rolled out in such a way? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I must say that uh, in first place is, is the political commitment. So uh, clearly uh, there was uh, in our city council a strong political commitment to uh, put this in place, this policy in place. 
Uh, although I must say that uh, if uh, the political commitment is too personal, it could be a risk in case you have a political change as uh, it happened in, in Pamplona in 2019. Anyway, uh, I think political commitment is a critical factor of success. Also, uh, the favorable regional legal framework, uh, because uh, here we've got in, in Navarra region, it's, uh, uh, a region in Spain with a big autonomy and um, well, uh, we are able to, to approve our own procurement uh, laws. So uh, there, there has been a favorable uh, regional legal framework uh, with the law of uh, 2008 and also with the law of 2018 and that are following the principle of, of the uh, European um, uh, directives on procurement. Also, uh, well, to, to design and elaborate the guide and the internal instruction uh, has been uh, very important. And I must say that a uh, critical factor here has been uh, working with uh, all the stakeholders in the Urbac local group, because we've got in the Urbac local group on board uh, the main uh, public bodies of the region, including the regional government, also the university and, and also um, the, the, the organization that manages uh, all the public services at the, uh, the metropolitan area. And we've got also association from uh, businessmen and businesswomen, uh, SMEs, and we've got uh, also um, social organizations. So we are working together with them to raise awareness around this uh, policy and uh, try to uh, co-design in a way uh, with then uh, uh, the steps that we are giving in, in introducing uh, social environmental criteria in procurement. Also, I must say that a critical factor of success uh, has been the strategic approach of uh, implementing um, social and environmental criteria because uh, before uh, it was a policy uh, driving uh, from the environmental department, but now uh, it is driving uh, driven from the um, strategic office. And uh, uh, as I have said in my presentation, uh, for, for us is part of our strategy for 2030. Thanks, Ozzy. So yeah, I think um, what's, what's interesting there as well, as well as the, the are backed Kind of wider project you mentioned about the, the Arbat local network that you or the, the network you created as part of the project activity so it's obviously important to to work together with those those institutions whether it's suppliers or other public buyers to really um to make sure that in your region the social and environmental um, procurement is being is being pushed forward as well um were there any key barriers or what was the key barrier that you you came across during the work uh, do you mean just one barrier? Yeah, well, it's for, for time purposes, uh, or you can name a couple, but just name the main the main barriers that you uh, that you face. Well, I I am really uh, concerned about one, and it is the, the, the culture of the public servants in procurement. So uh, yeah, for me it's very important that uh, uh, we are trying to change. Uh, public policies, but they still the, the people is the same. So we've got uh, public servants that has been uh, working for 30 years and they have been doing the, the things the same. And it's very difficult that they change uh, the way that they are doing things. So uh, when we're trying to introduce a change in procurement, uh, we are facing uh, so many barriers on this. So this is something that we have uh, to have to keep in mind. Thanks, Jose. And uh, and you, is there any particular key barrier that you faced when you were piloting your social environmental criteria? Uh, of course, uh, it was, as I mentioned before, the absence of a very concrete uh, legal uh, framework allowing us uh, in security to apply such criteria. And especially we were worried about the social value uh, index that we applied uh, done for the first time nationally and being uh, uh, afraid of being rejected at the pretendery control. Uh, of course, um, it, there was a huge difficulty identifying 
uh, those environmental criteria uh, because there wasn't any prior experience in that. So we have to describe each and one of every of every product included in this um, in this uh, procurement. Uh, uh, so it was a, a vast uh, work to be done. And we also have to cross check that those material and those uh, certification of, uh, of those products were available locally and nationally. And uh, above all, all the above, all the, the mentioned before, it was the COVID-19 restrictions, uh, restricting a lot our working patterns and uh, the way we communicated with our uh, local um, SMEs and stakeholders, uh, delaying importantly the following up of every stage of the tender. And of course, uh, being restricted to solely digital meetings and uh, following up uh, of written uh, do documents instead of actually being able to discuss in detail uh, elements of the process. And far, far than if, and for most, uh, of course, the low capacity of the business community that we have to train in advance uh, in order to make sure that they will have the ability to tender one time to bid when uh, when the tender was launched. Yeah, so I mean, a lot of works and time spent making sure suppliers were were aware of of the plans that you had. What was what was the reaction in general from suppliers when you when you first mentioned the social environmental possibility for criteria? Because you, you said it's the first time this has been done in your region. First time we invited them at the city hall to discuss with them uh, what we were intending to do. Uh, all of them were skeptical. They thought that there was a motive behind the, uh, initi uh, the initiative that we wanted to ask for something more and that there will be hidden agendas behind the process, which was very funny. We had then to, as I mentioned before, build a trust between us and start working uh, more in, uh, in detail with them. And after they realized the whole concept, they were very enthusiastic. And uh, more than that, they were the ones actually to propose the social index that we didn't really have in mind at the beginning of the process. Uh, so we were very happy to see them offering back to uh, cross-checking for us, uh, uh, reviewing documents, uh, asking, knowing, uh, uh, changing emails, uh, following the process. It was very inspiring. And I think uh, uh, having uh, now succeeded in the process and uh, gaining their, their trust that we uh, indeed uh, followed our um, promises to them, I think that this uh, builds an excellent uh, relationship to be invested in even more projects and even uh, new agendas. Thanks, Theo. So yeah, so really, it's a, really building that trust was was an important part from both sides, I guess, on on that process. Um, just to wrap up in the next few minutes of the of the conversation, um, Jose, if if you were to do this all over again, from uh, from from Pamplona's perspective, what would you do differently? Well, <clears throat> for me, uh, well, in my opinion. I think we've got a weakness in, in Pamplona regarding that uh, we don't have a dedicated unit or department uh, uh, in procurement. So every municipal department is uh, making and designing their procurement processes. And I think this is uh, something that uh, make, it, uh, make it more difficult to, to implement uh, this kind of policies. So uh, if we will start the, we will start again. Uh, well, uh, I, I will create this this unit, and, and it's a project that uh, uh, has been in, in the agenda for the last fifteen years in the city council. But as I said before, as I said before, uh, changes are very difficult to to become a reality in, in public organizations. So. Uh, well, I wish that uh, we will have it soon. Thanks, Jose. Yeah, so that kind of central-led sort of procurement team would be a really good way to to strengthen the the uh, social and environmental approaches throughout the whole throughout the whole uh, organization. What about you? Uh, if you were to do this again from the beginning with your pilot procurement, is there anything you would have done differently? 
Uh, I think that uh, we will uh, gain the credibility of the local stakeholders by, uh, by involving them since the beginning to the process, meaning from the very first technical meeting, we would have invited them to hear the examples of uh, Preston and the rest of the partnership in order to see that these are feasible and how uh, they were um, developed. Uh, so as to have also the same knowledge base uh, from the beginning. And uh, we would have uh, definitely tried to be even more um, uh, consequent in our following up reports, uh, try to make sure that uh, they understand that how the input they're providing to us is being invested in the project and what results that does it bring to the process. And leading on from that, finally, in a perfect world, EO, what would procurement look like in Kavala in terms of sustainable outcomes? Through making spent pro, uh, matter, we, had, we really understood the social value that each public tender includes. So I think that uh, this revelation for us made it really clear that uh, an ideal uh, um, world would be uh, where the procurements will be um, a bottom-up process being, defi being defined. Uh, the local community would indicate uh, the immediate needs needs to be covered and these uh, tenders will be prioritized. And uh, we, I will be very much uh, happy if we could even have a, a participatory budgets, activities, or uh, uh, even uh, the, pro the possibility to overcome uh, legislative barriers and uh, respond to immediate needs, especially on uh, occasions like the COVID, like uh, climate change effects and uh, extreme event, uh, weather events that we face more and more lately. Uh, so are flexible and able to respond to immediate uh, needs um, procurement board to be the, uh, an idea for us. Thanks, CEO. And, uh, and Jose, just a, a final question to you. What would, what would procurement look like in a perfect world in, in Pamplona? Well, for me, uh, in a perfect world, procurement would be an easy and transparent process. Um, with a high level of communication between public bodies uh, and the market. And I think always uh, looking for innovation in delivering social and environmental outcomes. And I think it will be a process that um, allows companies to deliver services and products where um, I would say quality, price, and env uh, environmental and social value meet perfectly in a perfect world. <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot, Jose, and thanks to you as well for, for sharing your, your story of, the, of, of how you got to where you are with the, with the project. I think two very sort of inspiring, inspiring case studies of, of public authorities that have really worked to, to make the most of the conditions and make the most of the opportunities that, that came their way to advance in this particular field. Um, I do notice from the chat there's been a few comments and questions about the actual criteria itself. We will share after the event uh, the materials that the, that the cities have used. Uh, I think Jose already put in the chat there is also there's the, the guide with some case studies. So we will share all the materials which do include some of the some sort of, uh, examples of social criteria as well. Uh, after the event, but we, today we just wanted to get those those stories of of how this was done from a more kind of uh, development and and uh, sort of organizational culture perspective. So, if I could just have this last slide on the on the screen, that would be great. And I will just share a few insights from myself um, in terms of key takeaways from these case studies that uh, that I've certainly noticed. Um, obviously, internal dialogue both. Pamplona and Kavala really one of the first steps was to was to onboard colleagues and to use that political support as well as the kind of more ground up um, um, uh, sort of skill sharing um, to really get started on this so it's really important to use all the different um, uh, internal colleagues and onboarding processes that you can. I think particularly what we've seen, especially in the Kavala um, example, is the is the importance of supplier dialogue and market engagement. I think if, if you're a city trying this for the first time or certainly looking to push 
further in the social and environmental criteria levels, then I think um, informing the market as early as possible and keeping them up to date on this is really important for building trust as well as ensuring that uh, any any sustainable procurement is, is still ensuring a healthy competition for those tenders as well. Building capacity, of course, uh, one of the major things that we did in the project was to do this with, with the cities, but also um, the work that Jose and, and Dio and her team have been doing to build capacity internally and even locally with other anchor institutions has been very important as well to really increase the, the sustainability and procurement in their regions. And we've seen as well with uh, with Pamplona making it mandatory. So Jose mentioned the the ten percent uh, award criteria that has to be allocated to uh, to sustainable to sustainable outcomes or sustainable criteria is really um, something that means then that uh, every procurement has some element of sustainability, and uh, hopefully um, this is something that more and more cities and even national governments will continue to do. And then wrapping it all up, really, just that is, I think, one of the main parts of, uh, of these case studies has been that organ organizational culture change. So really um, uh, onboarding as many people, and particularly in the case of, of these cities where they've really um, tried to do things a bit differently, is being bold and just embracing the risk. Uh, there is some risk involved in starting this. Um, it's, it's new territory for many cities, but I think as both internally and externally with with all the stakeholders involved then this can be a very successful uh, very early um, uh, or sort of early successful uh, process that can happen so as i say uh, we will be uh, um, sharing the materials uh, as, as much as we can after the uh, after the event with everyone so you have a bit more uh, depth on the on the actual criteria and other side of these case studies but for now, I'd like to thank you all for your attention and for, for, for being here to, to share in these stories. And um, yeah, really, um, hopefully you're looking forward to the final panel presentation as well, which will, uh, will take place at actually 12.10, uh, not 12 o'clock, uh, as seen on the screen there. We're running about 10 minutes behind schedule. Uh, the Vimeo link to the final panel session will be in the email that you should have received on the 19th. So um, you can click into that and, and join at 12.10. Uh, but for now, I'd just like to have a, a big thanks to, to Io and Jose for, for sharing their stories and being, being so honest as well into, into some of the, the barriers and, the, and the, the mistakes that were made as well that they would do differently. And again, thank you all for your attention as well. So we'll see you at 12.10 in the panel session and uh, yeah, enjoy a nice break. Thank you very much.